Good morning, boys and girls. It's good that you've come uh, to listen to God's Word this Lord's Day. We pray that together we'll be able to learn from the Word of God and see what the Lord has to teach us in this day. Let us just open together in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we do give thanks to you for the grace that you've granted unto us in the week that has gone. We thank you, O Lord, even for the measure of health that we've known. And we thank you that, O God, you've enabled us even in this day to come to your house of prayer. Father in heaven now, we pray that as we seek to learn from your word, we ask that, O Lord, you grant us attentive ears that we may be able to learn from your word and be able even to apply it even to our lives. These things, O God, we do pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, today we are going to look at one of the great men in history who was uh, appointed by God to rule the world. And we will start with looking at King David. King David was a great king and he reigned in Jerusalem. David had a son called Solomon. Now, when King David was ruling Jerusalem, is that the Lord had told him to appoint his son Solomon to take over him and build uh, God's house. Let's turn to uh, First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. We'll read from verse 9 up to uh, 10. And David gave charge to Solomon. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father, and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Be careful now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. So here, King David was giving charge to his son Solomon that uh, he was to build the house of the Lord. For this was a directive from God to David to relay it to his son Solomon. Now Solomon in all his reign is that he had all the glory around him. And when Solomon inherited his father's uh, uh, great kingdom of which he made his humble request for wisdom in answer to the Lord's question, as we can see it in Second uh, Chronicles chapter one. We we'll look at Second Chronicles chapter one, verse seven to eighteen. We are told, in that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, "Ask what I shall give you." And Solomon said to God, You have shown great and steadfast love to David my father, and have made me king in his place. O oh Lord God, let your word to David my father be now fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. For who can govern this people of yours, which is so great? God answered Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may govern my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, 
such as none of the kings and who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. So Solomon came from the high place at Gibeon, from before the tent of meeting to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Israel. So boys and girls, here is Solomon, who has made such a rare request of which no man can make before uh, God. And in most cases, is that if we are, if we've been asked to, to make a choice or to make a request, we always ask certain things which are far from God. I'm sure you boys and girls, when you're asked to say that, uh, what would you ask from the Lord uh, to give you? Some of you in this day and age, the things that you see around, you'd say, no, me, uh, I would ask for uh, that sports car called a, Lamo, a, a, a Lamborghini. Eh? And some of you, as boys, would ask for a PS5. Eh? And for the girls, I don't know what the girls would think or ask for. But generally, mostly, you would ask for things which are of no, of, uh, of less benefit uh, to your spiritual soul. But for, David, uh, for Solomon, he asked one most great and precious thing, and that was wisdom. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before these people, for who can govern these people of yours, which is so great. You can see what uh, Solomon was looking at, is that he made himself smaller. He reduced himself. He saw within his heart that he was incapable of handling and leading the kingdom and its people. But instead, he had to seek help, and that help is nothing but wisdom and knowledge. And that was all. And what the Lord had seen out of him, he did not scold him. And he saw, and the Lord said, indeed, I will grant you wisdom and knowledge. But apart from that, we can see what uh, God had added to him. So boys and girls, you can see that uh, he did not ask for anything like riches. He did not ask for anything like uh, wealth, but instead he only asked for two things. And the Lord did not just grant him the two things, but he equally gave him the riches, which he did not even mention. He, uh, he gave him possessions, wealth, honor, and long life. And those are the things that the Lord had granted to Solomon. What would you desire for God to give you in light of what we've said? Would you restrict yourself to say that uh, God only gives you wisdom? For sure, knowing fully well that uh, God knows everything that we need is that he is able even to provide that which we do not ask for, because he knows we need it. But that which is of most important is that which is precious. And that, for Solomon, it was wisdom and knowledge. So wisdom is prominently highlighted in the scriptures. When we look at the book of uh, Proverbs, uh, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, it talks of wisdom and knowledge. In verse 7, we, we hear of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you can see that God had given Solomon a lot of wisdom 
and he wrote great things of which many people uh, many many people use the word the words of Solomon to bring uh, knowledge and understanding in many people's lives even in reasoning is that um, most most of us even in this day and age we still use the wisdom of Solomon's words in our lives in our judgment all the things that we do we do them in light of what the word of God says but was Solomon speaking on his own no God had put wisdom in his heart and mind that he was able to articulate and bring issues with the instruction of the Lord and so for you yourselves as boys and girls is that you also need to admire Solomon for him seeking wisdom even at your age you can still seek wisdom so that you are able to make right judgment even as you grow so we can see that the Lord had given Solomon what he needed and of course the task which was ahead of him was so great to build the Lord's temple to build the Lord's sanctuary it was not an easy task of which even David his father gave charge to him you could see that it was a righteous assignment for David could not build the Lord's temple or the Lord's sanctuary because the Lord had told him that you are a man of war you have shed blood on your hands so you cannot touch or to undertake even the building of this uh, sanctuary but instead I've chosen your son Solomon and Solomon was made to be king over all Israel and was given all the wisdom that he needed to rule so we can see boys and girls that uh, Solomon did not ask for riches okay but instead he had asked for God's wisdom as we've read uh, when we look at uh, uh, verse 14 Solomon gathered together chari chariots and horsemen he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem and the king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stone and he made cedar as plentiful as the sycamore of the shelf fret and Solomon's import of horses from Egypt and Kew and the king's traders would buy them from Kew for a price so Solomon had all this wealth which was given to him and did not keep it as his own possession but instead he used it even to the what to the building of the kings of, of God's uh, temple so he prepared all the materials that were needed and that required a lot of wisdom and knowledge but where would he did he go to school no he didn't go to school for that was he an intelligent person no he was not an intelligent person but intelligence and knowledge came from God because he had asked it from God and he was able to build uh, this this house and you can see the wisdom that he has when you look at uh, chapter 2 of 2nd Chronicles verse 6 says but who is able to build him a house since heaven even highest heaven cannot contain him God cannot be contained in a temple built by human built by human hands because for God even heaven cannot contain him because God is great and God is uh, cannot be confined to a space but God has designated to say that uh, you must build the house where you will be able to worship me 
and that assignment was given to Solomon uh, to do it. But the other thing is that uh, apart from the riches that God had given uh, Solomon, he also gave him honor and fame. If we look at Second Chronicles chapter 9, chapter 9, Verse 1, we can see, Now when the queen of Sheba, head of the firm of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions, having a very great retinue and camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from Solomon that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the sitting of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, and their clothing, his cup bearers and their clothing, his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. And she said to the king, the report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom. You can see that uh, Solomon's wisdom is that it had drawn a lot of attention in all areas of the world. And it drew attention of the queen of Sheba who came as far way down as the Nile River, and that is somewhere in Egypt. He went, she went all the way with all the wealth, the gold, the silver, and the incense, the spices, just took them to go and pay homage to the king of Jerusalem. And that was Solomon. Just go and prove and hear the wisdom that the king has. So Solomon was such a honorable, so to say, and famous and firm king that he was known in all the ages of the earth and that uh, other rulers and leaders sought to find that kind of wisdom by coming to pay courtesy to him, and that was the queen of Sheba. So the queen of Sheba came to Solomon to seek, to find out what exactly this wisdom is all about. And the queen of Sheba found Solomon indeed to be a true man of God. Okay. The other thing that was promised to Solomon is that he was to be granted long life. Long life, I suppose that is one of the desires of many people, that they would want to have long life even as they live on earth. But who has the power to be able to have this long life, to grant, to give themselves long life? There's no any other person who can give us but except God himself. And this was rewarded uh, to Solomon. And if we look at uh, uh, Second Chronicles 29, we are told, uh, verse 22 to 27, we are told, And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time. And they anointed him as prince for the Lord, and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king in place of David, his father. And he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. All the leaders and the mighty men, and also all the sons of King David, pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. And the Lord made Solomon very great in the sight of all Israel and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king 
before him in Israel. Thus David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. The time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So he can see that he reigned for 40 years as king over uh, the tribe of, of Judah. And he reigned there. And you see is that he was granted long life. Despite him being an inexperienced person, yet the Lord guided him. Yet the Lord showed him on how to rule the people and on how to fulfill even the tasks that God had given him. And he brought glory and honor and righteousness even unto the Lord by him being a king over the children of Israel. So he, he reigned as an example and everyone saw that indeed is that uh, this man was appointed by God to rule over the children of Israel and to be a king over Jerusalem. So what does this tell us? What has the message got to do with us? Is that a God himself, he has entrusted us, even in this day and age, we don't need to be judged by a queen or Sheba to come and judge us of the things that we know very well. Boys and girls, I'm sure, Sunday in, Sunday out, even when the preaching of the word is being preached, is that the word is exposed to you about the warnings. It was just recently that we were celebrating the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on how that God had planned it, that through that is that we would be able to have everlasting life, that we will be able even also to resurrect on that material day. And to you, I'm sure it is simply a mere uh, song a mere happening but boys and girls it is a warning to each and every person living on earth to respond even to God's word especially when we see these things to you it is a mere uh, some it's just an academic exercise to some it is merely a tradition but you know, it is not a tradition, neither is it academic, but it is a way of life. We are so privileged that the word is brought to us, near to us. It is not far from us, but yet we've chosen to ignore it. For Solomon was given all that he needed. He was given the wisdom and the knowledge, and he utilized it to them fullest and he did his duty very well and who came to judge him he was judged by the queen of Sheba and the queen of Sheba found no fault of what was said of him she proved it on her own and she was glad and she had no more words surely for you and me tomorrow when we are judged would you want to be judged by the king himself when he returns to judge the world and when he comes to judge definitely he will need to find you ready for him as for Solomon the queen of Sheba she found that indeed this man was 100% ready for questioning. And the Queen of Sheba found nothing wrong or all that that was said about King Solomon, she proved it to be right. If we look at uh, First Kings 
chapter 10. First Kings chapter 10, we are told, uh, verse 1 to 13, when the queen of Sheba inquired of him, now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the sitting of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings, that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. And she said to the king, the report was true, that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came, and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report that I heard. Happy are your men, happy are your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. So you can see that the queen of Sheba, she had proved for herself. She had all these questions and all our questions were answered. And so for you, are you going to be judged by the queen of the south, by the queen of Sheba, by the things that you've heard and learned? Have you despised even the Son of God with the message of salvation? that came to you or you've chosen to lead a different life remember that the a greater judge than the queen of sheba is coming and when he comes he must find you ready so may the lord bless you and enable you even to hearken to his word. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening to God's word. We look forward to seeing you again next Lord's Day. Let's pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we do give thanks and praise even for your word, especially when we've learned of the wisdom that you have given even to King Solomon that, O oh God, of all things, he despised riches or wealth, but instead he chose wisdom and knowledge. May it be true of each one of us. These things we do pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.